Welcome to the Shared Practices Podcast. This is season six on growth. And we have today an extremely patient, amazing guest who's been waiting to get on this show for a few years now. Um, and I, I keep telling them, hey, we're going to have a marketing season. We're going to have a growth season. Uh, and and I, I have to apologize. And I'm really, really excited to have this conversation with Joshua Scott from Studio 88. Welcome to the show. Hey, man, I am so happy to be here. It's like the highlight of my week for sure. Dude, I think we, I, I've known you for a little while. I, th- I feel like we met season one and you were like, I'd love to get you on the podcast at some time, but we're in this season right now <laughs> that it's about whatever. And right. once we get to marketing, I'll have you on. And here we are six years later. I'm like, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> we're almost a decade later. You know, oh. you know what? So it's, it's <laughs> almost four years that, I mean, it's four and a half years since we started the podcast. Um, and and you're not wrong. I think we probably met at the first Voices of Dentistry, which has yeah. been about about that long. So yeah, yeah. appreciate your patience. Uh, I'm happy to be here. It's 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 so good, especially just uh, 2021, man. Just connecting with friends again, it, it, whatever way you do it, it's just so nice. So, well, I have to introduce you for our guests a little bit more here. Um, you are. And, and your company, Studio 88, when I was starting my podcast, I remember looking at all of your stuff and like the amount of polish and the amount of like you guys have been doing video content. You're, you were like five years ahead of this video curve. Like everyone is like, oh, you need to be doing video now. And and five years ago, you guys were putting out, you know, producer tier video podcasting uh, and, and and content for for dentists. Um, so I've been looking to you guys as brand inspiration of like polish inspiration um, since day one for shared practices. So, so thank you for that. I don't think you knew that behind the scenes, but I've been lurking and watching for a very long time now. Oh, thanks, man. You know, what's interesting is I, yeah, day one, like we started studio 88, 2014 and that month, January, I I knew I wanted to create content. And so I got a, a Nikon, um, gosh, what is it? A 75 D 75 or 750, something like that. Um, set it up. At my desk, I was at a different uh, office then in my my old house and sat down and was like, here's the 88 show. Let's go. Episode number one. And um, I did it myself. I edited it, Final Cut Pro, um, you know, produced it, did the bumper, you know, uh, sound bed, you know, all, all that because um, I can get around a little bit in that. But um, went from that to six months later, hiring our first video producer and even as a company going, can we do this? Like, is there a market for video? Um, and in some ways, I probably missed the whole audio podcast boom because I went straight to video. Um, but then now, like three years ago, we hired our second full time video producer. I was before you, I was just on a Zoom call with a third because we just can't even keep up with video production right now. So it's it's been a ton of fun. Well, I, I have finally caught up. I have pushed back on video podcasting. You know, four years ago, I, I was like, hey. No one's gonna watch two talking heads like <laughs> right. just you know I've got a face for for radio so um, but now I mean with with platforms like TikTok and IG Reels and then just showing up authentically online on YouTube on your website all of these things I I am now purchasing all the video gear I've got you know some studio lights here I, I just got a Sony A sixty four hundred with uh, yeah. uh, I think I've got a thirty five millimeter uh, uh, nice lens on there and yeah. you know trying to get into all of this um and and i definitely see the value um so you guys have always been ahead of the curve but i, I want to start off too with our kind of uh giving a context to the right people who uh make great clients for you and then and then i want to get into branding in particular video content creation websites marketing growth um but i do want to step back and say studio 88 strikes me as a premier brand Okay. Um, and, and I'm sure that's kind of on purpose. I, I think you guys create premier tier content for dentists, but if someone came in and said, Hey, I just bought a Medicaid practice. I need to build a website for under two grand. Would that be a great client for you guys? Or maybe not necessarily. I, I, I want to see what you would say to that kind of person. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, first I would, I would take the call and I would help them however I can. I think anytime I'm on a call and we can technically call these sales calls, right? Like if I'm talking to somebody, um, but I'm very, I'm very consultative. And honestly, there's, there's a huge part of our vision as a company. It's not just to be premier, but it's to elevate the, the profession. And I know, you know, this and a lot of people out there, you know, dental marketing, on the whole, the last decade has not been very good. Um, sometimes I say, you know, dental marketing sucks. <laughs> and, um, and that's really been a, a motivating factor for us was I think when I looked around, I've been around dentistry for almost 20 years now, which is a little crazy, but started this eight years ago. And it was from that, that motivation of looking around and going, hey, dentistry is innovative. It's inspiring. It's this beautiful profession of humans serving humans. Why can't we tell that story? And, and that really became the driving factor to it of like, let's value creativity higher than we do, but let's also create really high end client service with it and be consultative with clients. So, you know, I would take the call with them. I would, I would help them however I can. But yeah, in the end, our, our model is probably not set up for that. Um, I actually sent out a video ahead of time. I'm like, if you're looking for a budget website, we're, we're probably not your company. Um, and, and some of that premier, whatever, you know, brands look, uh, is designed on purpose, but I mean, man, our, our creatives are, are paid well. Um, we value them when we build a website, like seven people touch that. Hmm. And so it's a little bit of a different process. Like if you're signing up with just a budget website company, literally, you know, probably a client manager handles the administrative and a developer sits down to something pre-programmed, pre-templated makes edits, plugs photos in, and that's it. You know, you got two people. Um, so we've got seven people that touch a site. It makes it super unique to you. Uh, they're all, I mean, our photographers and videographers, like you can go get photography done. It's like good luck making it look like we do because our photographers are paid really well and they're really good at what they do. So. Yeah. And, and I, I want to set the stage for that because what I don't want um, our audience to do is everyone hear this and be like, man, I love studio 88 stuff. I really want them to come do my website for me, but they're, they're not able to come to the table with a marketing budget. That's appropriate for that level of brand and, and marketing. And I remember, I remember hearing Scott Luna, um, two years ago at breakaway practice, um, saying, you know, I think there's going to be this shift in marketing where we go from, um, you know, these these websites that like look nice and kind of are professional looking and really crisp and clean to authority marketing, where do you want to be seen as the authority in this field in your area? Um, and so creating a brand, creating uh, an identity that people are looking to um, definitely is is a new trend or a new direction. And, and I would say that you guys are are on the forefront of that. Um, and when I think of like, oh, hey, I want to create a brand. I want to be seen as the guy in this area. Um, you guys would be the ones that I would I would talk to of like, let's stand out. Let's let's be head and shoulders kind of above the rest. Um, and I think that branding process for me, it's kind of fun. Like, um, and I'm also a huge pain to work with. Like when I when I'm I mean, let's get really specific. Let's get into. Uh, and, and I haven't really let you talk here about that. So I, I actually let's let's stop and say, what do you think about that authority driven, um, brand driven um, marketing in dentistry? Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, lo love that you said that. And, and first, yeah, I, there is this perception, and especially when you say a premier brand, I'm like, look, I, I love that. It's a com we take it as a compliment. We've worked hard to build that. Um, at the same time, I, I hope that that never puts people off like, oh, we're too expensive. Um, cause to be honest, we've, we've packaged and, and structured our investments and projects and strategy into something that's comparable with most of the other companies in our range. And so, okay. um, so I, I think I'm like, have a conversation with us first. It, cool. it, it's going to be an investment for sure, but I, but I think it's, it's also something where it's like, it's, it's manageable and, and it's com completely approachable. So, um, yeah, I, I think dentistry has, we're in a shift with that for sure. And, you know, I, I think, look, especially post COVID, it's just, it, it was, we went through the stage of like, okay, websites are here. They're your digital brochure, you know, like, let's just throw something up that talks about the practice to, you know, media rich, like, okay, let's get photos and video. 
to now, I, I think everybody realizes where your website there is it's an extension of you. It's, it's your story. And for most, it's the beginning of the narrative. Like most patients may not ever step in your physical practice, but they might visit your website. And so beginning that narrative of this is who we are. And, mm-hmm. and I think we can call it authoritative. We can call it personal branding. We can call it, you know, story based, like whatever we want. But at the end of the day, it's connecting with humans. And I am a big believer as things go more high tech, they also have to go more high touch. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes in dentistry, because we're so innovative and because we're so technologically driven, that we think, especially we can automate stuff like marketing or uh, just put up a quick website and it doesn't need to be very much. And gosh, you know, somebody for $3,000 can do that. And I'm like, but we need to pay attention to there's actually humans on the other side of that. And just because we can automate chat on a website, should we? And I think that's the question. And people ask me like, what do you think about like adding chat? I'm like, if it's an AI chat, that's, trying to take what somebody's writing and guessing, you know, or, or predicting responses. I'm like, no, but if you've got somebody there, like answering that, that can engage with a human. I'm like, yeah, go for it. I think that's amazing. So it's, it's one of those questions that I think marketing has been put in this kind of automated, te- you know, uh, innovative space. And we begin to automate stuff, funnels and all, you know, and direct mail and all these things. And, and you have to go like, but where's the humanness of that? And how do we connect? That's, that's amazing. I love that message. Um, and it's hard to do. I think that's um, that requires more attention. It requires more effort and intention. Um, sometimes it's hard to show up on video and create video content of ourselves and of our team and getting that on the website um, and, and, and really connecting before someone comes in. But I think it pays dividends and people sense that. If they trust you walking in the door to your practice, then all of the following conversations of what treatment is needed and referring other people to the practice, it kind of snowballs where this practice becomes the, the place to go. Um, so, so I would love to come back to like branding. Let's, let's come back to if someone were to come to you and say, Hey, I want to, I'm doing a startup or I'm doing an acquisition and, and I know I'm going to do a big rebrand. Um, and I want to, I want to work with you guys and I want to create a brand. Um, It's ironic because I'm literally in the middle of this. I'm buying a practice, closing on Monday. Fingers crossed, everything goes really well. Um, I don't think I'm going to say which practice I'm buying on air right now, just on the off chance that that there's a hiccup. Yeah. But I'm going to have to rebrand because the practice I'm buying has the name of the dentist that I'm buying it from as the name of the practice. And so I have in uh, AI Illustrator um, pulled up, on the other tab, what I've been doing the last two days while I've been sitting in some army meetings I've been stuck in is, is doing logos and all of almost all of the logos, I think four of the six logos that I'm using as inspiration are studio 88 logos. Um, (laughs) Nice. And, and you guys, like, I just can't get away from the beautiful work that you guys do. So I'm going to shout out some logos that you've done here so that people can look these up. Um, Dental Nouveau was one of the recent ones that you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, they are recent too. Good job finding that. So clean. Well, and I saw it the other week and I was like, oh, I like this. And I couldn't find it yesterday. And so I messaged your team on Instagram. I was like, I swear you guys just posted a recent logo. I finally found it on your Facebook page. I was like, yes, this is the yeah. one. Yeah. Beautiful logo. Very simple, very clean, um, but powerful at the same time. Um, Domino Dental. Yep. Um, 100 West. Uh, a good friend of mine yeah, and then, yep. and then thrive oh yeah jenny yep yeah so i i'm blown away by how you guys are able to create a brand and one thing i i've noticed is that it seems like it's hard to do with a lot of words hmm. so the the name of your practice um is going to impact your branding and your logo because if you're like Something, you know, Castleton Square, cosmetic and family dentistry, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like if you've got 10 words, it's really hard to create a very compelling uh, brand and logo. So talk to me about your process now that I've vomited all of that about how excited I am about your guys' logos and, and branding and everything you guys do well. Yeah, yeah. Well, and first, man, shout out to my team and our designers because they... Dude, it's it's like we the longer we go on and, and obviously the company grows and we take on this volume and, and 
me and my business owner partner, Joe, we're like, we, we never want to compromise quality. And so that's the question for business owners, right? It's like, how do we grow and serve more, but not compromise and just like pushing out stuff. And literally this week, I saw some websites that our design team pushed out. And I was like, I had to go in and comment like, guys, this is ridiculous, like so good. Yeah. And I feel like they're getting better as they go. But yeah, I mean, man, I think I think right now it's fun to work with people that feel like their brand, like they see it as this almost lifestyle extension. And one of my tests when I'm talking to potential clients is when we're talking about logos is, Will, if you put this on a shirt or a hoodie or a beanie or a, a trucker hat, put your logo there. Is somebody going to wear that? And if I think that's the test, right? I think a lot of people are filtering some of their brand decisions through like swag. Um, is this cool enough for somebody to wear? And, and and maybe that's not you. And like, I totally get that. But, you know, there's there's brands popping up, up now like Domino Dental that O oh, with the Domino's man, you could put that brightly colored orange trucker hat, put that logo there. I mean, game over. People, you can walk around Brooklyn like that and people are going to be like, what is that? Like it's a dental practice. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So that's the stuff we're trying to design. And, and those clients you all mentioned are just, they're, they're bought into that. They're aligned with that and, and they want to be able to you know, whatever it is, I know Jenny at Thrive is very eco friendly. So even like a like a wood toothbrush with her logo on it, stuff like that, it just fits so well. Um, yeah, man, we look, we've got a multi designer team. So part of it is I, I feel like we've hacked the process. Um, I actually when a client works with us, and we do a branding project, I assign both a male and a female designer to the project. So we get different perspectives. Uh, we do a little research into the area to see what other people have so that that mark actually stands out in, in that space. Um, we It's a whole presentation, man, black and white versions, color versions. We'll mock them up in the signage, business cards. So you can see what they look like. Um, it's it's a ton of fun. It's one of my favorite pieces. That's awesome. All right. Maybe, maybe after the call, I'll uh, send you some screenshots of, of what I've been working on. I've got a whole, uh, here's my... You're like, no, I don't. I don't want to uh, do some free logo work for you, Richard. Um, here's we the logo. You. We got you. Like, yeah, you don't need to be an, an illustrator messing around with this stuff, man. <laughs> I, I love this crap. I made I made the shared practices logo and illustrator. Uh, yeah, and it's not it's not like you know high end beanie quality. But we wear this. We we've, we've got some shared practices swag, and I we're not embarrassed about it. We're excited about it. Yeah. But um. Some of my guidelines, because I'm, I'm working on logos, is no teeth, no smiles, no dental instruments. Yeah. I like sans serif bold fonts. Yes. I prefer black and white. And then we can play with the background color. Yeah. Um, and so it's like I get into this kind of thing and and um, I'm excited about it for whatever reason. Um, but I, I love the process that you go through and that you've got the team and you've got the talent and the quality and a high filter on that. And I think it takes both you guys are dedicated to it. But like you said, the client is dedicated to it. There's some dentists who are like, I honestly do not care what my logo is. I don't care what my branding is. I just want to do dentistry. Yeah. Um, and, and that's fine. I'm sure you guys make beautiful logos for those dentists too. You just happen to care about their branding more than they do. Um, <laughs> and, and they trust you to do that for them. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, it's a really cool um, back and forth process of, of naming branding um, and getting to that point where, I love that that filter of would people happily wear this? You know, would your team members cringe to put this like, you know, accessory on with your branding on it, or would they be super proud to do that? I think that's really cool to think about it that way. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it starts with with the name, um, starts with the icon, the colors. It's interesting you said that because so many practices right now want to conceptualize a logo in a neutral environment black, white, grays, you know, maybe some browns and then, and then work in the pop of color here and there, and even be able to even change those colors seasonally or annually within the practice, um, mm -hmm. those types of things. And so it's, um, yeah, it's, it, but even the, the name, like I heard somebody, I was talking to somebody the other day, they were in New York and man, I forget the name of the practice. It, it might've been something like orchard or it was something like that, but it was orchard dental concept. Okay. 
And and I thought that was interesting because you know we've seen like the dental spa and the dental uh, studios and all that, but but that concept word coming into it, but even something like that just signals you're different, right? And this is different, and so there's so much, and, and I love that you're talking that way about teeth because my biggest argument we do not design logos with teeth, and I don't know that we have. We have worked with some, like if we acquire a client sure. and they have it, we'll work with it, but. I don't, we don't design them because I just feel like they know your dental practice. Um, I think we're all assuming you work with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I think we're all on the same page. So, but like, no, seriously, your logo is a chance to say something different. It's, it's the start to a, to a narrative. Like, what is it? And so even like you mentioned a sans serif font, that's a font without the serifs on it, which are those like times new Roman, the little things that hang off the sides. Um, they're supposed to make a font more readable because it, it flows, but we get into like a Helvetica or Gotham or, or something like that. Um, just that says modern. It says right. clean. It says different. And so your font choice, your icon, it all begins a story. And I just don't think you need to have teeth in it if necessarily. I 100% agree. I love that we're aligned. And I looked through, you know, I've, I've been browsing through your guys' logos the last few days, like I said, and I didn't see any of that. Like you, all of them have a very clean, modern but also distinct it's not like oh you know that's a studio 88 logo because it looks like other ones it's like no no no. this is different and and tells a story in the logo itself yeah um, i feel like we've got a real signature style like if, if you look at you know 10 websites you could probably pick out our three or four but i also feel like our process has really been able to create something unique for that client Right. There's like this level of, of quality that you're like, oh, that's Studio 88, but it's unique enough that you're like, oh, that's that represents that client. Totally. So, well, um, cool. You, you geeked out on branding and logos with Sorry. me, which I'm really excited about. And if I lost some of our audience. I'm, I apologize because I love this stuff. <laughs> um, so, let's talk about um, uh, growth of a practice. So, if, if a practice comes to you guys and says, hey, my biggest, I know I need to do a website. And I need new patients, you know, because because sometimes you can put a lot of time and effort into a beautiful website that tells a story and there isn't an immediate um, like tons of patients come out of that new website. Um, so how do you link those together of let's do a rebrand and pair that with growing the practice um, so that it's not just, hey, the, the website looks great, but it's also like, OK, we're also cranking up the marketing on these different dials. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really conversations between knowing the difference between branding and on like, like a marketing spectrum on one side, we've got branding on the other side, we've got like a advertising or, or I call it direct response. And so when we're talking about like, Hey, we need to grow, we need X amount of new patients. We're really talking about a direct response. Like we put an input into the market, we get an output back. Branding is, is tougher. You can't, we're not putting inputs out that have direct measurable outputs coming back. Um, so that's kind of where it gets a little diluted sometimes where you hear people talking smack about marketing, well, like, you know, spend X amount on a logo, but it doesn't bring you new patients. I'm like, well, yeah, you might be right, but that's also not the metric for measuring brands. Um, so, you know, what we can't forget is that the biggest companies in the world are brand companies. Mm. So I think sometimes in dentistry, we like, we can go like dismiss brand because it's not bringing in new patients. But what we forget is Amazon, complete brand company. Coke, complete like Apple, the biggest, most valuable companies in the world are brand companies. You know, and, and Coke, like you used to take a look at them or Apple, how they market, it's just a percentage of their budget. You know, Coke is 7% of their revenue goes into advertising and branding. But it's not, you know, you never see from Coke the offers um, you see them at a grocery store level, but you don't see Coke on TV. Like their Super Bowl commercials are not mm -hmm. buy four 12 packs, get the fifth one free. It's the polar bears drinking, you know, it's, it's the, you know, whatever, enjoy the taste of Coke, like jingle. So that's its brand. It's them being in front of an audience, generating connection, emotion, feeling. And so I think I'm like, I think dentistry has gone so far to direct response. I try to like pull people back to like, I think if that's just later down the road in the conversation. And so when you're talking about how do you grow, 
I think one of the best things you can do first is build that foundation of your brand. Um, I've got a real simple process when I think about digital marketing. It's three steps. It's number one, discover the story. Number two, we tell the story. And then number three, we share the story. So if we think about digital marketing in that kind of macro 30,000 foot view, most practices want to share the story. Like they, just, they, they want to share it like, okay, digital ads, like Facebook boost, whatever. But they, they're really not telling the story very well. Like their website is not good. And yet they want to drive digital ad traffic back to it. And further, they haven't even stopped to go, what is our story? Like, what is it that makes us unique? So I think that's our different, like we kind of flip that approach and go like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to sharing, but let me stop and let's go. What is it that we're going to say? Um, you know, 10 years ago, somebody would be or 15. They're like, hey, the yellow page rep is here. They want to know if we want to change our yellow page ad. Like, right. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, like right. what, what do we want to say? Right. Like they're they're the yellow page as like, we're going to share your story in the yellow pages. What do you want to say? And they're like, I don't know. And I think that's a big disconnect is like, let's go back up and go, here's the story, which is the brand. Like this is, we're going to discover that. Here's the brand. Here's how, who we are. Now we're going to tell it, which is a lot of your website. It's, it's reviews. It's all those things that tell that story. And if that foundation is built, I'm like, man, you can start pulling levers now here. We could put a digital ad campaign in place. We could boost a Facebook post. We can get more aggressive because now we know we're driving traffic back to something that tells your story and connects and it's authentic. That's marketing that wins like long term. No, absolutely. And and the way that I think about it too, um, specifically with this, this practice situation I'm going into, I've got a very... Um, aggressive proven Google ads and some other things, strategies from a friend who's got this exact same style of practice um, it, that is a little bit more of a specialty practice than like a regular GP practice. Um, and he, I know this works. I know that if, if we put in X amount of dollars into Facebook ads and Google ads, we're going to get new patients. The thing I'm worried about with that is then I'm reliant on the market for Facebook ads and Google ads. And so if all of a sudden a bunch of other people start doing the same thing and drives the cost way up of all those ads, or it's just harder to get seen, they change their algorithms. I don't want to be dependent on, you know, the, the flavor of the day strategy of money in uh, clicks out. Yeah. Um, but I know I need to start, I need, I need to have that to get patients in the door, but my intention is long-term in this practice, building the story and the brand and and being known for this in my market in my community and that comes back to exactly everything you've been talking about of telling that story online um, of being able to um, live that and communicate that via social media via the website um, and and I think that as dentists do that it's like a flywheel of of your reputation you know you, you the book um, good to great they talk about Building yeah. up the flywheel is a, is a slow process um, and building up that kind of practice that has both a referral reputation, but also an online reputation and a brand and identity that takes time to spin that up. But as you spin that up, you can then decide, do I want to spend less money over here on the side on all these, you know, money in clicks out um, or or are all of the, those dollars now that much more effective because the end point of where people are going converts better and leads to to better patients who are more ready to accept treatment and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that you said that, man, because I think, um, so we're, we're on that direct response side, all it takes for somebody to knock you off over there is to come into a community and spend more. Mm -hmm. And so this because is what I'm, I'm hoping to be that guy in a minute here. So I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look like um, startups and acquisitions. I'm, I'm the first one to go like, we probably need to be on that side. Like you need to leverage that, come in, drop an investment. Like, let's just get some visibility and get seen. Um, but th this is why we get so concerned when a Heartland, an Aspen, a Comfort, whatever, come into that area, because we know they're going to drop 80,000 in Google ads that first year. And, and maybe your $500 Google ad spend is just like, it's decimated now. But so it's not good, bad, right or wrong. That's, that's a play. But on the brand side, if you've invested 10 years of brand equity into your community, good luck for somebody to come in and knock you off. Because it's not just about being on Google. You're now in people's head. 
and you've got equity, that mental equity in their minds and their head and how they feel about you because every year they see you at the breast cancer 5K race and you're the major supporter and handing out swag, that's a whole different game. And so it, it's just like not discounting one for the other because then you're then you're you're exposed and you're vulnerable. It's knowing where you're at on the spectrum, even timing, right? Like a startup could be way more direct response, but we're building brand in the background to a point 10 years down the road to where you are the biggest, best practice in that area. Awesome. I love that. I think we're, you and I are like exact same wavelength about the the two pronged approach um, and how, how you can set yourself up for success now and in the future. Um, and, and that strategy kind of needs to be layered on top of each other. Yeah. Um, well, um, I have one more area that I really want to take this conversation, um, which is which is video, uh, video production, uh, you know, getting comfortable on camera, um, how to incorporate this into your practice as a regular occurrence. Um, that's what I'm really excited about right now. But is there anything else that you feel like um, you'd want to hit before we get to that, um, that our audience would benefit from in terms of growing their practice, building a brand, um, website, strategy, kind of big picture type stuff? No, man, I, I think we could definitely move into that. Um, yeah, I mean, gosh, I, obviously, I love the conversation around branding. I think that's probably what we do, you know, best. Um, but, the, you know, digital ads and, and all that has a place for sure. I, I know that what's interesting, I'll throw this out one last thought here is um, we're seeing this with dental implant marketing right now. And um, I, I know this, this could be even relevant to you, but dental implant marketing has arguably been one of the bigger trends in dental marketing in the past two to three years. Sure. So entire companies have been built around just dental implant marketing in the last two to three years. Part of that is because Google search volume got to a point where now it's almost, it's accepted in American psyche and in search and people are trying to figure it out and search for it that now basically these companies are just built because of Google search volume. Like it's there so they can build, you know, create ads. But what's happening is you create digital implant ads. They go back to a landing page that doesn't tell your story. But what's happening is now we're having trouble converting and we're having trouble with that long tail sales cycle because what we, we end up having is, is issues with they don't know the price. They don't know the values. Um, and so we may drive 25 phone calls, but the, the practice on the other end is like, but they're not qualified and they're not showing up and they're canceling and they're shocked by the price. And all that speaks to a lack of brands. Like, yes, you drove the direct response, like good job, that campaign worked. But when there's not a brand in place to align values, mm -hmm. to speak to the experience and your story and what they can expect and your practice and expertise, then we're, we're realizing there's a disconnect with the patients that are contacting us. So no, video. no, no, no. Uh, with that now i'm like oh crap what's the answer um so the, the i think brand is one of them um and, and creating that connection um and also I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion on ways to qualify patients before they come in the door have you had any of your clients with dental implant marketing since the cat's out of the bag that's that's where i'm kind of going here um yeah that uh they've been able to kind of build some sort of filtering into that, that uh, process of, of getting those patients into the door. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of people handle it different ways. And I think we're in that kind of experimental phase of like, now we've, we've seen the trend where companies can drive leads. Like that's not the problem. Um, I, you know, we, we can get you 25 phone calls in a month. Um, but now we're in this phase of like, Oh, how do we solve that and qualify those 25 to actually get legit patients in? And so, I think where they're landing and, and that site is important, um, you know, and a lot of times we're throwing up just a quick landing page to educate about implants. But, you know, I think if it matches your site, if it tells your story, if, if there's a video of you sitting there talking about the process and what they can expect, now they're actually connecting with you and there's that trust and expertise established. Um, we're trying, we're seeing people pre-qualify them with, um, you know, quizzes or surveys, mm -hmm. um, I think how your front office handles those calls is important. Um, you know, the virtual consult 
space has been good for this. And I think it, that could be where it gets its most traction mm-hmm. is instead of coming in, let's do a virtual consult first to pre-qualify you. Right. Um, I think you've got to like get some type of financial, typical financial investment out there so that they're aware of that. Right. Um, it, it's just a different process. And plus, I think like we can get you 25 phone calls, maybe, you know, four or five or six come in for a, a visit, but that doesn't mean the rest are dead. And so I think even that of, how do we hold on to these guys for the next 24 to 36 months? Um, and, and how do we continue to market to them is, is a huge deal. Dental practices have not done a good job. If it's outside of like a 30 day period, it's out of sight, out of mind. Right. Um, and implants can't be like that. Like it's, it, this is a three year process of that sales cycle, especially all on four or, you know, full arch restorative stuff. I'm like, they may talk to you now, literally three, four, five years down the road, something happens, they convert. And they're like, they know you're the guy. It's just a timing issue. So how do you remarket to them that whole time? Well, and and I think um, CRM, we've talked about that a little bit in this season of being able to have a place to capture leads and then having a system to follow up with those leads. You're absolutely right. I think we fail at that across the board in dentistry. And for the normal patient, if you're t- talking about just like a normal, I'm going to need a couple fillings and, and a few cleanings. It might not make sense to have them in a CRM where where you can you know have some systems and some follow up with those patients. But if if we're talking about yeah, like you said, a full fixed arch of, of implants and restorative, um, then all of a sudden there's a lot of worth in that lead and that warm lead who has already reached out to you, who you know responded positively to something you were putting out there, and um, is worth following up with and and. If, if practices aren't um, sophisticated in their marketing enough to capture those leads and follow up with those leads, they're, they're losing some low hanging fruit for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. Let's, let's, let's move to video here. This is, uh, I'm, I'm sure my listeners at some point in the season are going to get sick of me talking about uh, video. I, I discovered TikTok in like October. I resisted TikTok as like a thing that was legitimate for a long, long time. I was like, no, this is teenagers dancing. This is stupid. Yeah. Um, finally downloaded it and just got like hook, line and sinker. This is one of the most entertaining, enjoyable apps uh, of, of my life because it captures so much, um, like raw human emotion, storytelling, reactions, hilarious, heartwarming. Um, like I don't see anyone dancing on TikTok these days. Cause I just like tell TikTok, I don't, I don't want to see this. And it's okay. pretty good. Yeah. Algorithm learns. Okay. This is a guy who's into dentists type stuff. He's into art. You know, uh, I I really like following artists on TikTok. Uh, You know, I I have my own set of things and the algorithm serves up to me what I like. That's, I think, one of the apps that's driving a lot of video. And and, um, in particular, there's a few accounts that I really look up to and respect. Like there's one of them in Australia called Dental Boutique. And, And they do a great job of capturing A video before, very simple, the patient's still smiling, full, authentic, genuine smile before. They capture the moment of delivery, so the patient's reaction to seeing their work for the first time, their new smile for the first time, and then they capture a video after. And when when I saw this account, I was like, okay, crap, like this is for real, because what TikTok has done is that it's forced people to become good video content creators and rewards very heavily good video content creators. So I don't think dentists across the board need to get on TikTok. However, TikTok is an exercise in if you can create video that performs well on TikTok, it will perform well on a website. It will perform well on Instagram Reels, on YouTube, on Facebook, on all these other platforms. And that's my headspace right now of I want to try and see if I can create authentic storytelling, human reactions, um, really at a very high level that I can repurpose and build a brand around. Um, But that's a challenge and it's expensive and there's a ton of gear and editing takes a long time and and video is finicky and it's awkward and self-conscious and getting patients to agree to, you know, be on screen and record and, you know, all of those releases and all of that. So it's, it's an uphill battle for sure but I think it's one that's absolutely worth it. So I would love to hear your thoughts around creating video in a dental office. It's worth and how to streamline this and make this part of your office rather than this thing that like 
is is you know happens once and you never never do it again yeah gosh i, I love your insight there too i i had never thought about that but you're actually right because my my pushback what i hear all the time is you know like um like tiktok like we're you know that's not our ideal patience that's too young and da, 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 why would we and all that but it's when you say that you miss the point and the point is exactly what you said learning how to create video that connects that's a a micro platform that if you can do that that'll scale to wherever um and, and yeah I, mean, I think video right now there's no better way to connect with somebody in a digital environment than with video it's just not so whether that and i think there's a lot of room for air i think we've got like the really precise like 15 second TikToks, but i also think like man if you just put up a one or two minute piece of, of you doing your thing i think that works really well too so we're in this space right now where there's a lot of room for air there's a lot of margin uh, most dental practices don't have video on their website so it's it's an seo advantage right now um <laughs> people man we could talk all day about seo good seo and spend that you know spend 1500 bucks a month on seo strategy and i'm like put video on your site like that might be pull out your phone and take some video and put it on your site have it correctly tagged and that's going to do yeah. a ton for your seo yeah i'm not going to say it's going to solve all your problems but i've seen sites jump pretty high just because because like it's not a secret man google has said they're prioritizing sites with video um and I think right, I think for the next three to five years, that's going to be a competitive advantage. But probably five years from now, I, I think most dental practices are going to have it. So um, I, I think the goal there, there's for me, there's probably two spaces. There's like the the produced video, and then there's like the spontaneous raw kind of stuff. Social media, I think produced website driven like that is that's your narrative that's your story like you want this controlled produced piece you want to make edits that uh, you know you're you're a filmmaker creating edits that precisely tell a story you're controlling the the sound bed to create the mood um i think that's one space i think the other space we have to think about is is social and micro videos and raw spontaneous and it doesn't matter if the lighting's not right and the audio's a little a little rough and all that and it's fine again like we get into these spaces where i think we want this dichotomy of like well which is it is it this or that is it on or off and i'm like it's both mm -hmm. like we need both and you you need to pay a production company to produce those like signature pieces that are on your site and connect you also need a team member that can just have the phone ready for anything and birthday boomerangs and pushing you to do your first TikTok and and all that stuff. So it, it, it's all like, it's just this human storytelling connection medium. So. Okay. So you've got someone who's like, okay, I'm bought in. So if I'm, if I'm wanting to do the highly produced stuff, they need to hire someone. Yeah. Um, so how do you guys do that in terms of, are you guys full service? You come out and do all the video production or do you outsource the local filming um, and then edit and do stuff on your back end? How do you make that? Uh, what's your workflow for creating that highly produced video? Yeah, it's, it's our same approach with photography. Early on, we would find and work with some local photographers in those areas. Um, to be honest, the, the quality was just too inconsistent. Mm. And, and they don't, and we're looking for specific angles and what we call um, <laughs> our team geeks out on negative space. Mm. Uh, when you have a photo and you're using it for a website, you need negative space because you got to put text or a box with a quote in it, a review from a patient or a button. So like it's, mm -hmm. it's this mindset of our photographers are going and looking for different things. And so, so the photo or the video is, is almost like a frame for another piece of content that's going to be baked into your website. Yeah. And it doesn't all have to be like that, but we need a certain percentage of the, the images too. And especially if it's like, when we, if we go into a practice, we, we find the one operatory that has the most natural light and we clear everything off the walls. So like if there's, you know, like a picture of a golf course hanging there, whatever it is, turkeys, you know, or like <laughs> whatever the doctor's hobby, um, you know, or, or like a, a dead turkey head or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you've seen some weird stuff in, in operatories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
we pull it all off the wall, partly because I'm like, if we can get the patient in the chair with the clinician, but yet blow out this white wall mm -hmm. or there's a white wall there, we can blow that out and actually create negative space for days. So our photographers are all looking for stuff like that because it can't just be picture, text, picture, text, like everything has to design together. Um, and video is the same way. I mean, we, we just realize our, those creatives are invested in our team. Uh, we're invested in them. So, uh, you know, two, two to three uh, full-time photographer and videographers every week, they're somewhere around the country uh, filming. So, yeah, you, you know, what we try to create, we're, we're creating in light of a dental site, a dental website, our, our um, video-based websites, we call them story sites. They have photography and video both included in that. We, we really try to create two different pieces of content. Um, I mean, we create multiple videos, like up to eight videos, but we're looking for the inspirational connection pieces, like your story, what makes you guys different, your philosophy, all that. And, and we're looking for some educational content too, um, especially knowing like if we've got a dental implant page, I, I really want you kind of geeking out on that, you know, on that page. And if somebody lands there, they're, they're trying to be educated. They actually want to learn. So Let's we, we, we don't try to focus exclusively on services because we feel like the majority of the connection needs to be inspirational, story based. But, yeah, if somebody's trying to search dental implants, man, they need to feel like you're the expert. Absolutely. OK, cool. So you guys have a great process in place and it's worth it for you because you know exactly what you need. And you've got this relationship back and forth between the videographer and the photographer and what the website is going to be, the demands of the website. Um, so that's awesome that, that you have that whole team that works together cohesively. Um, now let's take it back to people wanting to create that more authentic, uh, not authentic, but more casual, more, you know, a little bit rougher content that's just, you know, the realistic day-to-day -day stuff. And the dentist is thinking like, oh, like, I don't want to be always trying to whip out my phone and like edit this on some app in my phone. Um, how do we identify and train team members to become little mini videographers? Um, have you seen practices that have done that well? And, and what have they done well to really in, integrate that into their practice? Yeah, uh, it's one key. It's, it's money. It's, it's pay them. <laughs> um, and, and I'm being like, I'm joking about it. But, but honestly, it's um, here's a deal with and, and this is like a bigger picture social media content conversation. Um, the best approach for you handling social media content, um, is somebody there doing it. You're just going to get that spontaneousness, that authenticness, all that. So our startup practices, man, I'm like the main doctor, do it. Like, like do your best. They, people love that entrepreneurial journey. They want to see the startup. They want to follow you. Um, the, the worst. So that's one side. The worst is to do nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Or do nothing or pay a company to produce canned, like templated copy content. paste. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's something dental joke or something holiday, like stop that, that doesn't do anything. We handle a lot of client social media accounts and it's kind of like that intermediate in the middle. Like, like we create custom content. We've got photography and video to work with so we can kind of do it. But if, if you're being real critical, it could you know, come across like it's distant and we're not there capturing Stephanie's birthday or whatever. Um, so if you're a doctor and you're like, how do I create this? Cause I can't, and I'm like, it's totally fine. You don't have to, you need a team member or somebody local that can even come by a couple times a month to capture stuff, but you got to pay them. And it doesn't have to be a lot, but maybe 250 bucks a month. Cause otherwise here's what happens. Stephanie, the hygienist has an, a TikTok account and it's amazing. And you're like, you could do that for us. And she's like, yeah. And she does it for two weeks, but then everybody gets busy mm. and it stops. But if we separate and go, Hey, I, I'm looking for three posts a week. Um, you can schedule them, you know, just capture content, like come in, you know, one day or just whatever, we'll capture a bunch of stuff, schedule it even. Um, but 250 bucks a month, three posts, what, and whatever that is, right. Maybe start there, start less, go more, whatever. It's just making it like this is a legit job that we attach value to and we want you to like own it and kill it. So um, and, and 250 bucks is a deal for social media. I mean, management or, or content creation. Yeah. So I love that because it's a very specific system of like, hey, let's just attach because then then there's like an accountability piece baked into this yeah. where 
that conversation happens of like, hey, the posts haven't happened. Um, I totally get it. Maybe you got busy, but this month, you know, we're not going to be able to do that because that's what this was for. Um, right. And it only takes like one of those months for them to to turn around and be like, you know what? Okay, that 250 means a lot to me right now. Um, I want to be really consistent. I want this to do well. Um, I, yeah. I think that's brilliant. I, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that will solve a lot of problems. It's just attaching some money. It, it, yeah, you're right. It's accountability. Totally. Um, and, and you're going to have to, if, if you're going to try and outsource content creation, it's going to cost a lot more than that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, um, what do you want to leave us on if, uh, you know, we've talked about branding, we've talked about, um, you know, these different modes of direct marketing, you know, input output versus building that brand over time. Um, and we've talked about video, um, a dentist who's just like, man, I, I want to grow. Um, I, I, I need to know where to start. Um, what would be a good way for them to reach out to you and what would you walk them through in terms of what are your needs and, and where do we go from here? Yeah. You know, they can, um, best place for me personally is that over at Instagram at Joshua Scott, just reach out, DM me. Like I said, man, I'll, I'll do phone calls and just give you consultative advice. I tell people all the time, I'm like, even if you don't use us, here's like what I would be thinking about and doing. Um, so would love to offer that to any of your, your listeners. Um, Studio 88 website, s8e8.com, letter S, number eight, letter E, number eight.com. Uh, check out our stuff there. You know, I, I think some of it, my, my advice probably leaving you is, um, you know, marketing is a long game. And, and I think that's where we get disillusioned with it is when we try to play a short game. And, you know, marketing's never been about a, a hammer hitting a plate of glass. It's never been about magic beans that we put in the ground and wake up the next morning and there's a bean stock. It's, it's like any other successful business principle is this, this is a decade. Like, look at it like the next decade. And one of my biggest, this is going to sound so simple, but one of my biggest pieces of advice is set a predictable budget. Mm. Um, most practices are in that three to 5% range of revenue. And here's the deal with that is like, it takes the emotion out of it. it, it this isn't like, do we need new patients? Do we not? So we, we spend more or whatever. It's if you're a million dollar practice, let's just say you spend 3%, that's 30,000. That first year, you're probably going to look at it and be like, okay, we did some cool stuff. I don't know that, you know, yeah, there's a little bit of impact there. I can see second year. You're like, yeah, man, this is now we've spent 60 grand. Like this, this is moving third year. You're, you know, you're hitting a hundred grand of an investment into your community. Now you're feeling the momentum and you do that over the course of 10 years. And obviously that percentage goes up and now you've got a million invested in marketing or whatever it is, you know, 500,000. Um, you will be the premier practice in your area. Um, and, and I think 10 years is a short time in light of things, but it's that discipline to go, this is an investment. It's a 10 year investment. We take the emotion out of it. We just treat it as an objective investment. Um, be smart with it, which is I think where a company like us can help you. So you're not wasting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a long game for sure. I, I love this concept. Um, so much because as I'm moving forward with a, a more implant focused practice, um, I have a lot of ideas around this. I have a lot of passion around this. You know, some people like to go golfing. Some people like to play the stock market. Apparently I like marketing. Um, <laughs> and um, so I'm excited to have a budget and like, here's, here's the stuff we're going to do no matter what. Yeah. Then whatever extra is left over, that's my play money of like, okay, let's experiment with this type of video. Let's, let's try and produce something here. Let's try and hire someone who can help us with this on an ongoing basis. And having that budget is for me is very exciting because then it's, um, how can I, you know, turn this around where each month we're investing more because our practice is growing, but I'm finding really good ways and different ways. And sometimes marketing is going to be a risk. You're going to have to, to go out on a limb um, and, and try something. And I remember, uh, you know, before I knew I wanted to be a dentist, my dad had a company, uh, a consulting company, and, and he worked one-on-one -on -one with businesses, uh, on leadership and, and organizational change and things like that. And he said, sometimes you have to be willing to make a $10,000 mistake when it comes to marketing and trying new things. And people don't want to waste their money, like you said. Um, but sometimes the risks that we take and the new things that we try, um, and, and working with, and I think probably the best way is working with, uh, an established company who's done this extremely well, like yourself, um, 
is going to be how we can accelerate that over time. So I love that that takeaway here at the end of set a budget and, and then drive forward. And over time, that investment will pay dividends. Yeah. And the problem is if that $10,000 is, is a Hail Mary, then it's now we're in like that's screwed. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be in that spot. And, and that's the budget will get you out of that because you'll, like you said, maybe um, 0.5% of that is experimental. But we know the 2.5% is tried and true things that are working every year that we feel good about. So if it's a $10,000 like experiment, but we know that the other 40,000 is is awesome, that's a whole different place, you know? But like, but, if you're talking to us and you're like, okay, we're going to start with this $18,000 project, but man, this better work because this is all we got. I'm like, that's not helpful for anybody. Um, and most of the times, because you've been practicing for 10 years and never had a marketing budget and now it's a Hail Mary and, you know, we should have had one all along. So, yeah. I, I think that's great advice. I think if, if people, there's so many things here you've said specifically, which is my favorite thing coming out of an episode is, okay, find a team member, pay them 250 bucks a month for the specific content schedule that you've outlined, and that's the accountability. Set a budget for your marketing and then just reinvest in your practice for 10 years and that's just going to grow and grow and grow. Um, and, and then all of the, the things that we've talked about, branding and the flywheel and all of that. So Josh, thank you for coming on the show. This has been a blast. Oh man, I enjoyed it so much. I appreciate you finally letting uh, me <laughs> be on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd say we, let's do it again sometime, but yeah, we can wait another four, four to six years. No, uh, no, we we can we can do a little uh, post op on on my my ten thousand dollar experiments that I've got. Oh, up here. I, I'm so teasing you, you know that, but yeah, this was I knew this would be fun, so I'm glad we could do it. Cool. Well, awesome. Uh, this has been uh, yet another fantastic uh, interview here with Studio Eighty Eight with uh, Joshua Scott. Thank you for coming on the show and we will talk with you next time on the Shared Practices podcast. See you, Josh. See you, man.